morning, Boyle Heights. First, I want to say thank you to the community members and allies who showed up to stand in solidarity with us. This morning, we are coming out here um, to to speak about these recent allegations that have been tied into our activism work as an anti-white hate group. We will be talking um, with a few, we will hear, be hearing a few testimonies and reading our statement. I'm first gonna pass it over to Elizabeth, who is one of our allies and also white. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Blaney. I'm a resident here in Boyle Heights. I've been working in Boyle Heights for the last 22 years. I've been residing in Boyle Heights with my family for the last 14. I was appalled and angered when I read the LA Times article the other day to see that there were alleged anti-white hate crimes, uh, the accusations that were going on. As someone who is white who has been living in this community for 22 years, I have never experienced at any moment any anti-white sentiment. I believe that this is just another way for the galleries to refuse to accept responsibility for what they are doing to this community, for the displacement that they are causing. I believe that this is just another opportunity for LAPD to criminalize our youth, to criminalize people of color who live in this community. I think it is very, very irresponsible and immoral for what LAPD is doing to create a racial division in this neighborhood. To try and allege that there are anti-white hate crimes going on in this community where this community does not have a history of that. While at the same time, they are out there shooting and killing our youth. The youth who are people of color and other people of color in Boyle Heights. They need to take a step back. They need to not throw fuel into the fire. And the galleries are doing the same. When people who are white move into communities of color, we have a responsibility, and I believe that we have two things. One, we need to put our privilege in check. And second, we need to be lifting up the demands of our neighbors. Now I know when I say that white people have privilege, that makes us cringe. That makes us feel uncomfortable. We don't want to be reminded of our mistakes of the past. So we say things like, I'm a single mom. I don't have privilege. Or we say things like, I'm a starving white artist. I don't have privilege. Don't I need a place to live too? I couldn't live in Echo Park anymore. I was priced out. And yes, that may be true. Housing is a human right. Yes, I believe that we all need a place to stay. And we may not make as much money. But that does not mean that we do not have privilege. As long as there is institutionalized racism, institutionalized racism, discrimination, and oppression, white people have privilege. As long as I get treated better and differently by institutions, I have privilege. So we need to put that privilege in check. We need to accept it, first of all, and acknowledge that our mistakes of the past are not in the past. The past is still happening now. So we need to put our privilege in check so that we can change, so that we can make things better. And one way of putting our privilege in check is that when we move here and have an address here, either by bringing a business here or by living here, is to not put our voices first in terms of what we want. My neighbors, my neighbors are asking for laundromats to replace the one that got burnt down and the other one that got torn down. My neighbors are asking for childcare facilities. My neighbors are asking for places for their kids to go that are safe and places for the senior population. That's what my neighbors are asking for. 
So that's what I'm going to ask for, because that's what my responsibility is. I'm not going to ask for some organic cafe that's really cool, or a dog park, or 24-hour fitness gym. And those things all may be really nice, but that's not what my neighbors are asking for. A WIC office got closed down because they couldn't pay the rent of the new landlord who bought it five months ago. A WIC office. A local corner market who was paying $1,700 now had to pay $3,500 if they wanted to stay in this community. It got priced out. My neighbors are not asking for a gallery. They have never asked for a gallery. So I'm not going to ask for a gallery. My neighbors are not asking for the displacement that comes with what the gallery brings. And my neighbors are not asking to be criminalized. Therefore, I am asking the galleries to leave, and I'm asking you to take your trumped up false accusations of anti-white hate crimes with you. The only crime being committed here is the economic violence against my neighbors that is causing their displacement. Thank you.